coming up, a murder shocks a community overnight. And then today, a shooting renews calls for hanging. And Fox Hill pulls itself together one week after tragedy. The Bahamas Tonight starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents the Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. A gunman opens fire on a community counseling center, injuring one man looking to change his life. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles. I'm Kish Latterly. Thanks for joining us. Well, a young man is lucky to be alive tonight after he was shot while reportedly attending a counseling session at an inner city community center. As you can imagine, the episode left witnesses horrified. Clint Watson spoke with some of the men at the center who say enough is enough. Everybody of gun. The little school children of guns. What was supposed to be a routine court-appointed counseling session for a group of young men quickly turned into a crime scene as a lone gunman accompanied by three other men in broad daylight opened fire on the Public Hospitals Authority Community Counseling Center on Market Street. This young man, who we chose not to identify for safety reasons, was a part of the counseling session when his friend was shot. Holding the blood-stained T-shirt in his hand that his friend wore, he recalled the ordeal. He's right there, man. He's just sitting in the place. One of the boys run back inside. say, gun. So then when I peek out, I see the gun, and they open up the side door, and they say don't come out, but can't trap yourself in there. They run in the back and leave us. So we had to fend for ourselves in there. So we just run out the side door. And then when he sees us coming out the side, he turn back, walk down the hill, and he just start firing. So you were here part as well for counseling? No, I, I, I was a member of the counseling group. I had to run through the corner. And it was, it was my neighbor who was with me, he's two counseling too. He ended up he yeah, shooting him out, so we just ran straight by the hospital. Faith police car, we see we send them out this way. We described the boy to them and, and that was that. The broad daylight shooting has sent shockwaves through the community as these young men say enough is enough and want to see an end to the violence. It's a shame, man, boss. The government need to do something about it. Step up and do something about it. Start hanging these niggas. You gotta do it. That's what you need to hang these niggas, start hanging them. This thing too serious. When I look up, I see the young man running across the back of the fence here on the park and straight across the, straight across the main road with the gun in the yard. It's like, you know, law, but the law just need to step up, man. That's all they need to do. The, not the government. The law need to step up and deal with the deal with their job, you understand? It's not known why these men targeted this particular young man, but police had their own theory. Superintendent Lee Mandelavo, head of Central Police, was on the scene. No description of the shooter at this time. Um, we will certainly be working with the witnesses who are here at the time, and we will try to provide a sketch for the members of the public. And certainly the media. Staff at the counseling center outraged. They say they've made repeated calls for more security because of the serious nature of their work. These men say they no longer feel safe attending counseling. So when you, me and me and him could be, me and Clint could be enemies right now. And when we back here, it on. I call my boys, he call these boys. Somebody can show up with a tool and something coming over something. Ain't nobody gonna come back here if you ain't safe the counseling with the courts in there. I could be safe on the road, so why I come out? I, I ready to just tell him, write my letter to court. Let me go to court and let me deal with the judge. Give me a fine or something. It's the single work. I supposed to be to work. You see what I'm saying? I come from work to come here because it's mandatory, right? And this is what I have to come do. I might not make it back home. I tell him I lose two of my friends for the week. Almost was a third one today, just for the week, you know. The men also say safety is a big issue as they claim getting a gun on the streets is too easy. All you have to do is have your money. Simple as the shotgun with you have, you could buy on the streets for a little two, three hundred dollars. You see what they saying? No questions are. No questions are. All you have to do is have your money and you don't have to look like a police. Once fellas trust you, they sell you it. Police need your help in solving these crimes. You're asked to call them with any information at 911-919 or 328-TIPS. Clint Watson. ZNS Network News. 
A man was shot and killed last night in an inner city community. It's the third murder in three days, and now inner city residents say the streets are no longer safe. Very scared. It's a sad thing. You understand? You don't even know what hit him. You can't even stand in your yard right now. You understand? Not even on your porch. It's hard. That's how one resident who did not wish to appear on camera felt after the street she's lived on for most of her life became the backdrop of the country's latest homicide. The drive-by shooting took place on Taylor Street just before 8 on Thursday night. And what's even worse, it was just feet away from Salem Baptist Church. Our initial information that we're working with at the moment is that occupants of a small gold vehicle was in the area discharging firearms. These persons are very likely to be responsible for this fatal shooting. Assistant Commissioner of Police Anthony Ferguson says the victim was found lying on the ground with gunshot injuries to his upper back. His lifeless body was discovered between two vehicles. A crowd of onlookers lined the scene as detectives carried out their investigations. ACP Ferguson could not confirm at the time whether the victim was among a group of people during the shooting. However, residents tell us that several people were hanging under this tree and scattered when gunshots were heard. Uh, the circumstances and further details are pending the outcome of our investigation. As you can imagine, this is very early in the stage and we are in the process of gathering all of the information that we need that could assist us with compiling the information for investigations. This is the fifth murder since Prime Minister Perry Christie revealed additional crime-fighting measures on Monday. Among them, more saturation patrols, the reinstatement of the 12-hour shift, and the adoption of a strike force strategy. But ACP Ferguson says it has to be more than just the police. It's not what are the police doing, you know, it's the what are, what are the uh, citizens in the community doing. Um, the persons in the community have the information uh, that the police need to assist in putting uh, a dent in some of these criminal activities and we are asking members of the public who have this information to provide us with the information. And with three murders just two days into the new year, the assistant commissioner says police are not discouraged as it is the collective responsibility of all Bahamians to fight crime. Also on the scene last night were members of the Bahamas Christian Council. President Reverend Ranford Patterson says members came out to lend their support to the victim's family and to the police to see how best they could assist. He again reiterated that crime isn't just a political problem, but a national problem that must be addressed. We cannot continue every night to be going through this. This does something to the psyche of our people. This does something to international, um, what they think of us internationally. All of this is going to have a negative impact on us. And then the only thing we depend on is tourism. And if that stops, what, what's, what's the Bahamas going to be? You know, we, we have to, all of us need to get serious about this issue. Every one of us. And I hope to God that, you know, that we have a wake-up call soon. And that this groundswell of people would come up and say, you know what, we've had enough. And do something about it. Anglican Archdeacon James Palacios says one year, two days, three murders is bad news. In addition to the crime initiatives government reveal, he is calling for residents to get more involved in the crime fight. We need to stop cloaking wickedness and crime in, these, in a lot of these communities. And along with that, we just have to work preventively with the next generation, even as we work by way of ambulance work. With respect to the present ones, we need to weed out some of them, even as we try to produce a new generation of people who respect law and order and who respect life. That's the challenge. If not, our country is finished, man. If we can't curb this level of violence, we pack it up. And, but we can't. We have to be a people of hope and continue to trust and work together. The nation's chief releasing more specific details on how police will be directed to take on criminals and arrest this spiraling crime problem. Speaking at an urban renewal luncheon today, Mr. Christie says he's prepared to commit more resources and manpower to get the crime problem under control. Jimenita Swain reports. We cannot have people frightened to go out of their homes, frightened to go on parks. We cannot allow that in the Bahamas. 
Prime Minister Perry Christie has already outlined specific crime initiatives implemented following the recent crime wave. They include a strike force strategy, saturation patrols, and the reinstatement of the 12-hour shift. Mr. Christie says if he has to, he is prepared to put a police car on every corner. We cannot have the Wild West in this country where with impunity young men could ride around and shoot people down as if they're dogs. Mr. Christie says urban renewal has a big role to play in weeding out crime. That I would now wish a commitment from the urban renewal officers that they will go to every home in the constituency. This is, hear me now, street by street mapping out home by home what exists in those homes. In fact, Mr. Christie says there are 400 plus persons on bail for serious offenses and they too will be monitored. But for the protection of the community, we must know who they are, where they are, and they must be visited regularly so that they know we are watching them. Prime Minister Perry Christie says we cannot allow a culture of killing to come about in this country and public sentiment must be mobilized against it. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. The Coalition Against Discrimination, Victimization, Oppression and Crime has revealed a strategic seven-point action plan it believes will help curb the rising crime rate. The plan involves social and evangelistic outreach programs which all focus on intervention. At the same time, CADVOC Executive Bishop Walter Hanschel called on the government to enforce the laws of the country. Capital punishment must be resumed. These murderers have no respect, they have no fear for the law, they have no respect for nobody. And I think the government needs to have the courage to stand up and do the right thing, make the tough decision, and put these fellas away. Because they have no fear, and they are terrorizing this country. And we've had enough. Enough is enough. It's time for action now. Reverend Hanschel also called on Bahamians to put religion and politics aside and unite in an effort to fight off crime. A national plan involving all of the stakeholders, not just the politicians, not just the, 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 the parliamentarians, but also the church, the community leaders, um, the um, stakeholders, and everybody concerned must have a voice because nobody, no one person can fix crime. Crime is not, listen to me, we cannot even eliminate crime. We cannot eliminate murder, but we can do all that we could to reduce them. Last week's shooting deaths in Fox Hill and the recent shootings to start the year have prompted the Ministry of National Security's Operation Ceasefire and Violence Breakers programs to join forces with the Fox Hill Congos and Youth Against Violence for a special community event aimed at helping the community heal. A group of local pastors will take on politicians in a special basketball game of unity at the Fox Hill Park starting at 7 tonight. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage, Area MP Fred Mitchell, House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major and Opposition Leader Dr. Hubert Minnis are expected to participate. Organizers are hoping the event will draw the community closer. And with the participation of politicians from both sides of the House participating, they hope to send a message of unity. The free event comes following a bloody start to the new year with three murders in as many days. Prime Minister Christie has announced several crime-fighting initiatives to combat the rising levels of crime in a special address to the nation earlier this week. In our first look at whether a cold front went through the capital during the late morning hours, leaving behind a nice chill in the air, but outside of our studios just now, we have cloudy skies, temperatures 72 degrees, relative humidity 73%. Your winds out of the north at 12 knots, barometric pressure 1,017.4 millibars, at 30.04 inches, and it is rising. But stay tuned. Temperatures around the family violence, travel, and boating forecast is still to come. Well, still ahead, the Attorney General says a big change in the law could come to help cut down crime in the country. We'll tell you about that. And we visit the Fox Hill community one week after that bloody tragedy. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight.
portion of the news is brought to you by Shell Helix Ultra. Performance you can see.